Okay, let's talk about some database terms. Now, to do this, we're going to look at some sample data. And what we're looking at is from the World Sample Database. And this is included in MySQL Server. So when you install MySQL Server, if you say you want to include sample databases, it'll include two of them. And one of them is this. And we're just taking a little bit out of it. So there are three tables in it. We're showing you two here. And then, especially in the country uh, table, there's a lot more information. And we're just doing some of it in order to preserve space on the screen. Okay, so what we have here are a couple of tables. Now, the first term we want to introduce is this idea of a relation. So in database terminology, a relation is basically a table. It is a group of data that is put together. That's what I want. It's a group of data that is put together inside one single table. Now, we typically refer to this as a table. Formally, it is referred to as a relation. So that's actually where we get the term relational database from, is this idea that we have all of these relations inside this database. So that's our first term. If you hear the term relation, think table. And remember, tables are what store our information. They're going to store information about entities. Now, an entity is basically a noun. It's a person, place, thing, event, whatever. It is a entity, is a thing that we are tracking information on. So in our city relation or our city table, we're tracking information about specific entities. We're tracking information about specific cities. That is the thing that this table or this relation is all about. This is a completely separate relation holding data about a whole other type of entity. It's holding information about our countries, which then become the entity that is being tracked and managed inside this relation. Now, the third term we want to introduce is the idea of an attribute. Now, an attribute is a descriptive characteristic of an entity. So if we think about it in terms of country, right, we're going to have a code for the country, we're going to have a name for the country, we're going to want to know what continent the country's on, which region, what's the surface area, when did they become independent, what's their capital, what's the two-digit code for the country. All, right, all these are attributes, they're properties that describe the entity or the object that is being tracked inside the relation. So that's how those three work together. Now let's take a look at this with some actual sample data. And again, I've really, really simplified the sample data that we have here. So here we see in our city table or our city relation, we see a bunch of different uh, entities. We see an entity for Kabul, an entity for Kandahar, an entity for Herat. So all of these are different entities. And when we look at it this way, what we're seeing is we're seeing these, we would uh, sometimes refer to these as records. Uh, sometimes we're, they'll actually, they're actually referred to as tuples as well. So it's a collection of attributes about an entity is stored in a record. And that record describes that entity. So each individual entity has its own distinct record. <clears throat> now, the other thing we have here is we have these ID, name, country code, district. All right, these we would refer to as columns. Each column or field is going to hold information about a single attribute about that entity, right? So here's our entity. We're going to just circle this entire one here. See how well my circling with the mouse goes. So here's our entity. And in this entity, we have several attributes, the name, the country code, the district, the population. And each one is kept in its own column or field. Now, you'll normally in database uh, applications, you'll see it referred to as a column. And we get that name, obviously, from this particular layout. So. Let me go ahead and erase a bunch of this here because we need to talk about a couple of other things, and that is the idea of relationships. Now, relationships are what give relational databases their power. Without a relationship, then what we really have is just a bunch of data that 
is stored on a blob. A relationship is an association between entities. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's go ahead and circle Kabul again. So this is an entity, and this entity is related to this entity, the country of, boy, I really went off the rails there, of Afghanistan. All right, ugly, but it'll get the point across right away. So these two are related to each other because Kabul is in Afghanistan. And the way this relationship is created is by similar data within this uh, different tables or different relations. So right here, you'll notice that the country code AFG in this uh, entity relates to the country code AFG in this entity. And so that allows us to create a relation. Or let me try that again. It allows us to create a relationship. There we go. So that similar data or that same data within two different fields, we can use that to relate this database to, uh, data together. So we know that Kabul belongs in Afghanistan or it's related to this entity. You'll notice also that Kandahar and Herat are also related to this particular entity. Now, this is what we would call a one-to-many relationship. And what it means is that many different objects in one table or one relation, many different objects can be related to a single object or a single entity in a different relation or different table. So this would be the one side. So cities don't really belong in more than one country, right? But you can have multiple cities within a single country. So that creates a one here to many here relationship. All right. Now, there are two other types of relationships that we need to be aware of. The one to many relationship is far and away the most common. But there are two other types of relationships that we need to be aware of. And that is a many to many relationship which is where you can have many things related to many other things. So maybe an example would be dog names versus dog breeds, right? You could have many different dog breeds with a dog with that name on it, named Fido. And you could have the name Fido. So you could have multiple different dog breeds where dogs could be named Fido and multiple different dogs named Fido that can be in multiple breeds. I mean, it's, it's a many-to-many -many relationship. The other type of relationship is a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, this database, des this database design actually doesn't force us to be a one-to-one -one relationship, but I want to kind of illustrate this. And remember, this, this database design doesn't force this. But I want to illustrate the idea here just to kind of make it hopefully a little more relevant. So, And that's this idea of a capital, the capital related to the city. Uh, so each a country could have multiple different cities in it, but typically each country is going to only have one capital. Now, this database design doesn't actually force that. So if you're looking at this and saying, well, what makes this? So this doesn't force it. Typically, if you're doing a database design and you want a one to one relationship, you'll relate the primary key and one table or relation to the primary key in another table or relation. And that forces it to be a one-to-one -one relationship. <clears throat> but this was an example that I thought might help at least illustrate the concept of why you might use a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, so that introduces some ideas of terms that we're going to be using as we talk about uh, databases moving forward.